Hey, and welcome to another video here at Fiscal Voyage. Um, today we're going to talk about Cardinal Health. Uh, thank you, Investing with Jason, for leaving a comment in a previous video. Uh, he recommended to for me to do a stock analysis on Cardinal Health. So with that, we're going to do a five-minute stock analysis of the company to determine if it's a buy, hold, or sell. Coming right now. So let's start the five-minute stock analysis on Cardinal Health. Uh, you can find it in New York Stock Exchange as CAH. Um, the company is an American multinational healthcare service company and is the 14th highest revenue generating company in the United States. Uh, the company specializes in distribution of pharmaceuticals and medical products, serving more than 100,000 locations. The company also manufactures medical and surgical products, including gloves, surgical apparel, and fluid management products. In addition, it operates the largest network of radio pharmacies in the U.S. Uh, the company also provides medical products to over 75% of the hospital in the United States. All right, so let's look at some of the fundamentals. The company actually, uh, fiscal year ended for 2019 on July. Um, therefore, we're starting from 2010 to 2019 uh, fiscal years. Uh, at that time period, the revenue grew at a compound rate of 4.43. And net income basically doubled that uh, 8.72 in that same time period. Uh, currently has an investment grade rating of triple B plus, and operating income only grew at a 2.62 percent uh, compounded annually from 2010 to 2019. However, the earning growth uh, had double digit growth at 11.01 percent in that same time period. Uh, However, revenue has been growing over the past five years, it averaged at 9.83 growth. Uh, however, operating income came in at negative uh, 1.93. Net income has a slight uh, increase as well as 3.17%, where earnings grew at 6.03 over the five past years. Um, so for 2019, fiscal year 2019, the company had adjusted earnings of $5.28. Margin only came in at 0.94%. So this this uh, industry is very uh, tight in margins. However, it is, it is much better than 2018, which came in at 0.19. So they have been expanding uh, their net margin uh, there. Um, debt to cap at 52%. And currently, the dividend is at a 4.10% versus the five-year dividend average of 2.6. So uh, almost uh, double. The yield at current prices and they do have a nice payout ratio at 42.4 percent and the company has been growing dividends for 23 consecutive years uh, with a five-year dividend growth rate of 10.2 however the most recent increase came in May of this year which was 1 percent and last year they only increased it by 3 percent so their dividend growth rate has been decreasing uh, tremendously and the charter rule we come in at 14.3 that I see that coming lower because of the most recent increase in the past year and uh, this year and, and last two years. But for now, the five-year average plus the dividend yield gives us a 14.3 uh, charter rule. Let's look at the future outlook of the company. At 2020, fiscal year 2020, their expected earnings of $5. At 2021, $5.28. Actually, uh, for 2020 fiscal year, is going to be less then the 2019 earnings, which came in at $5.28. So uh, earnings is expected to be less than uh, fiscal year 2019. However, the 2021 is higher than both of the uh, uh, than 2020 expectations, but matches uh, 2019 uh, expectation. However, uh, CFRA expects earnings to grow at a compound rate of 5% for the next three years. Uh, currently, the company has a PE of 10.36 and with a forward PE of 9.4. As you can see, the five-year average of 27 means that the company is drastically undervalued based on that matrix. Let's look at the fast graphs. Uh, the black line is the monthly closing price, the blue line is the normal PE, and the orange line is the earnings PE average of 15. Uh, as you can see here, the black line is the monthly closing price is much lower than the normal PE and the average uh, earnings uh, PE of 15. Uh, so with that, it looks like the company is undervalued based off the fast graphs here. 
So let's determine the fair price of the company. A CFRA has a, a fair value of 53, Morningstar 55, Simply Wild 69, Fastcraft that we just saw at 69, Yahoo at 48, and my dividend discount analysis at 29. Uh, averaging out the six uh, fair value estimates, we get a price, fair price of 54 and 22 cents. At current price as today, you can get the company at 46.92, which means that the company is undervalued by 15.6% at current prices. So with that, I recommend it as a buy. Uh, I actually own this company. I'm in the negative because I bought it a little higher because I, you know, it was still undervalued, and I do want to purchase more shares uh, to lower my cost basis. Uh, I do like the healthcare sector. You know, people are getting older and more and more need of some sort of healthcare. Uh, I love the high dividend yield of 4.10%, um, and the dividend uh, growth years of, of 23 years of consecutive increases. I don't like, however, the most recent uh, three years dividend increases, which this year was 1%, and the last two years uh, was 3%. Uh, but with that, I still think it's a buy. Uh, healthcare is just going to get more and more in demand as time goes with the uh, the baby boomers, you know, getting older and whatnot. Uh, however, with that, you know, I recommend this company as the buy at current prices. Uh, so if you have a company that you would like to see next, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching. And if you find this video informative, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more future videos. Also, you can check out my portfolio in the link in the description below. And don't forget to take a look at my website, fiscalvoice.com. Thanks again, guys, and have a great day.